Welcome to the 10th talk on machine translation. Last time we have covered phrase-based MT, a model that decomposes sentences into short sequences of words. Some such decomposition and rules how to put these bits back together is absolutely vital, because no training data will ever contain all possible sentences. But cutting sentence strips with scissors, as phrase-based MT does, is not exactly grammatical. A grammar is a formal device to capture an infinite set of sentences with a finite set of rules. In the context-free grammar, all sentences are derived from the starting symbol S. The first rule in the derivation is usually this one. S goes to NP and VP. This is a noun phrase for the subject of the sentence and this is a verb phrase for the predicate of the sentence. Other rules tell us what this noun phrase can be. So one example would be the word dogs and the VP could be the verb sleep. The derivation of the whole sentence is captured in the so-called constituency tree. S goes to NP and VP and this NP goes to dogs and the VP goes to sleep. The grammar is supposed to capture all valid English sentences so many variations are needed. For example this NP can be also a determiner followed by an adjective and followed by a noun. The determiner can be the definite article the, the adjective can be black, and the noun can be cat. Let's use these new rules to derive a new English sentence. The grammar is said to be context-free, and that means that only the current non-terminal is considered when we are doing some production. So this NP is rewritten using this rule into the determiner, the adjective, and the noun. And similarly for the individual bits here. Oh, hang on, that doesn't sound grammatical at all. The black cat sleep. The problem is that the rules are considered in the context-free fashion. And when the computer expands this noun phrase, it doesn't know that it will be in singular and this verb phrase will be in plural. In order to capture these dependencies, these agreements, we need to refine the set of non-terminals. And we also need to refine the set of rules. So S should either go to NP in singular and VP in singular, or NP in plural and VP in plural. And we also need the corresponding rules for the verbs. So this VP in singular has to be sleeps and not just sleep. These days, people hardly write these grammars manually. Instead, they annotate many sentences with trees and simply read off which productions were necessary to create them. So, for example, this sentence from the Wall Street Journal section of the Pantry Bank contributes one more observation to the production of S going into NP and VP. In machine translation, we have three options where to apply some grammar. Either on both sides, the source and the target, which is usually dubbed 3 to 3 transfer, or just on the source side, going from 3 to a string, or from string to 3, target side syntax only. To capture the translational equivalence, we need to change our context-free grammar to a synchronous one. So instead of just one right-hand side, we'll have two. The determiner is le in French and the in English, and similarly for other rules. Black is noir, and cat is sha. This synchronous view has the power to express the necessary reordering's in some grammatical sense. So a noun phrase in French usually has the adjective after the noun and not before as in English. Let's make this rule synchronous as well. So here the, the French determiner, noun and adjective are translated into the English determiner, English adjective and English noun. So the grammar now tells us not just how to derive one tree, but how to derive two trees at the same time. For MT, we use these rules slightly differently. We are given just the source sentence, le chanois d'or, and we are expected to translate it into English using these rules. The rules tell us how to traverse various parts of the sentence and how to get the translation at the same time. So this le can be seen as a determiner 
according to this rule, in which case the translation would be the. Sha can be interpreted as noun, in which case the translation would be cat. A noir is an adjective and the translation is black. Similarly for the verb, obviously there can be other English words to translate the same French words. So for example, this noir can be also dark and that would be captured in a separate rule in the grammar. This additional rule then licenses one more derivation for the noir. So this noir can be also an adjective, now translated as dark. We are now processing the sentence bottom up. So the divide and conquer approach is reflected in the fact that when putting these pieces together, determine a noun and adjective, the computer doesn't look anywhere further. So it doesn't consider what the determiner consisted of and what the adjective consisted of. For each of these two variations of the adjective, the dark and the black, there will be two separate noun phrases created. Both will have the same label NP on top and one of them will correspond to the translation of black and the other one will correspond to the translation of dark. And similarly for the final concluding rule, noun phrase and verb phrase together. As in phrase base empty, we have covered the whole input sentence, but we have covered it differently. We were not able to pick the words anywhere from the sentence, we were just attaching together contiguous spans that were adjacent. And during these attachments, we knew how to reorder them. To get the final sentence from this derivation graph, we simply traverse these back pointers and reconstruct the English tree, taking into account how the individual uh, non-terminals were reordered. So this S comes from an NP and a VP, and the VP is translated as sleeps, while the NP comes from a determiner, noun and adjective, but in English these are reordered. Determiner, adjective and a noun. And the determiner was translated as the, the adjective was translated as black, and the noun was translated as cat. The black cat sleeps. The situation gets slightly more complicated in practice, where some of the modal scoring components, some of the features, want to consider also trigrams of words such as black cat sleeps, regardless the structure about that. These features are so-called non-local, but let's leave that to another empty talk. So how do we get this synchronous grammar? Well, we extract it from a world aligned corpus. We just need to add the trees. So again, we'll be extracting phrases that are consistent with the word alignment. But we don't learn only that Le Chat Noir is the black cat, but we also learn the syntactic structure with that. This type of extraction is actually more complicated because we require the phrases to be consistent not only with the word alignment, but also with the two syntactic trees. So while phrase-based MT was able to extract the same phrase without the article, just chat noir, black cat, this is no longer possible in the syntactic approach because this N, an adjective, is not a constituent on its own. There is the missing determiner. To avoid the loss of extractable translation units, several things can be done. One option is to binarize the tree, that is to change its structure so that it does have a labeled constituent for the span we want to extract, an adjectival phrase. So that was it, constituency trees in machine translation. Next time we'll see that the requirement on adjacency does not work well for all languages.